Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. We have done a lot of AI webcams on this channel, but we've never actually reviewed one from one of the brands that has a pretty decent claim to be the king. So today we're gonna change that. This is the Insta360 Link. And don't let this camera's teeny tiny profile fool you. It packs a big punch. In the box, you get the Insta360 Link, a really lengthy USB-C cable, some documentation, and these stickers that'll help you with whiteboard mode. And we'll get into that a little bit later. So as I said, this camera is super tiny, but it makes really good use of the size that it does have. The gimbal's capable of so much, it can do pan, tilt, and zoom, but it's capable of so much more. You can actually rotate it into portrait mode so you can shoot TikToks and other kinds of shorts. And because of its ability to rotate, you can actually use that ability to level it. If it's sitting on a surface and you notice that you're just slightly tilted, within the software, which we'll actually dig into in a few minutes, you'll be able to level it off to make it nice and straight. Around the edge of the base, you'll see an RGB indicator strip so you know what mode the camera's actually in at any time. On the bottom of the base, you'll see a quarter inch thread so you can mount it to a tripod and the base itself opens up to be a typical webcam mount but something atypical about it is that it's actually magnetic but i think it's time to see what this camera can actually do and you're looking at it so the insta360 link has a half inch sensor which is really big considering how small the camera actually is it's capable of 4k 30 video or 1080 60 video it's got an f 1.8 aperture so it can actually do pretty well in low light so you can see it's not a super wide field of view now the camera's just outside of my arm's reach right now and the overall field of view is 79.5 degrees it's perfectly serviceable and the fact that it actually follows you around basically opens up your whole room to become part of the field of view so now if i want to move around right now I'll start to move and you can see that it's very quick about following me. It's got no actual issues. We go up, we go down. It moves around no problem and it does it very, very quick. And even if I go all the way out, it'll zoom in to frame me up. Now this isn't exactly the way that the camera looks out of the box. This actually is. So it took a little bit of adjusting to get it to where I wanted it, especially in terms of skin tone and things like that. Now it's time for us to have a look at the software and see exactly what you can control. This is the Insta360 Link controller. You can see the controls up there, but they're kind of small. So let's blow them up a little bit for you. So the first thing we have here are our gimbal controls. You can actually use the gimbal here to move things around. So I can just go that way, excuse the mess on the table like that. You can see I'm just moving it around. You can also just use the arrows to do smaller adjustments and you can just click reset that right here and if you want to manually control the zoom you can just do that by dragging it in oh my lord and dragging it out now you can create presets here as well so if i actually take the time to move stuff around so say take this and drag it over there and then let's go ahead and i don't know we'll zoom in a bunch like that and then if i go to save preset i just click plus and that's my position two so now if i click position one it returns to position one. And then if I go to position two, it goes to position two. So you can set up a whole bunch of different things this way. And then we're gonna look at some controls down at the bottom. So first you have a toggle to turn your camera on and off. Like every other webcam, you can't use it in two different applications at the same time. So if you wanna use this software to control the camera while the camera's being used elsewhere, like on OBS, you need to shut this off. Then here you can select your resolution. So if I click here, so you see here, I have some options, 720p, 1080p, and 4K. Then across the bottom, you have some other options here. So we're gonna look down and we're gonna see tracking. So this is what actually turns on the tracking other than an actual gesture. So now that it's on, it'll start to follow me around again. Now we have a whiteboard mode, and that's actually what those stickers that I showed you before are for. So if you're presenting, you have a whiteboard in your general shot, you wanna put the stickers on the corners of the whiteboard so the camera actually knows what it's physically looking for. Then if you click here or you do the gesture, it'll actually lock onto the whiteboard. Overhead mode. So if you wanna use this as an overhead camera, you can, this is the button you're gonna press to do that, but it needs to be out on an angle for that to actually work. The way it's set up right now, if I hit that button, it's just gonna point straight down which is going to be pointing at itself so you need to have it on some kind of an arm or a tripod that's kind of tilted or something like that and then you have desk view mode which is essentially the same thing except it's meant to be able to do it from this position it just tilts down not quite all the way but based on its current location when i do it all it does is point down at my gut not the desk so we're not going to show that off sorry weird people who watch my videos for a very different reason and then if you go off to the corner here you actually have a screenshot so all you got to do is click that and it'll go to a predetermined folder and then you can actually click record here too and it'll do the same thing now let's go have a look at some of the image settings so first off the first thing i like to get rid of is the auto exposure so i'm going to take 
take that off. It's good for some people, not so great for me. So you have a shutter speed here that goes from one over 30 to one over 8,000. So here's the one over 30. Here's the one over 8,000. So I'm just gonna set it to one over 60. That'll be kind of our base point here. And then you have your ISO. It's defaulted at 640 and I'm reasonably happy with where that is right now. But if I go either way, you can see if I go all the way this way, I've really, really cut myself down here. And if I go all the way the other way, I am a ghost. So I'm good there, but you can also use these curves to change things a little bit. So by clicking on them and actually adjusting up here, you're adjusting your highlights. And if I did down here, you're adjusting the low end. So I could look like this if I wanted to, but I'm gonna go ahead and reset and just go back to normal. Now auto white balance, this is something that always kills me with webcams. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut that off. And if I'm all the way one way, this is a very, very blue picture. If that's what you're going for, I mean, go ahead. But we're just going to bring it up ever so slightly until we find where exactly we're looking for. And I'm happy with this. And this is about where we were when I showed it to you in the first place. So if you wanted to make any other adjustments, this is where you do it. This is your brightness, your contrast, saturation, and sharpness. And if you needed to, you could reset to the defaults right here. Now, if you go into more settings, you can see all the controls for the gestures here, and you can actually turn them on and off because you might be doing things on screen and then accidentally throw out a gesture and then make the camera do something you didn't want it to do. So you could turn them all on or off together, or you can actually turn them on and off individually in case there's just certain ones you don't want to turn on. Tracking speed, very important because if it's too fast, it's going to look really jerky on camera. And if it's too slow, it might not be able to keep up with you. So I like to keep it at normal. I'd like to have actually like a little bit of a fader so you can find your exact sweet spot. So I would say if you were further away from the camera, I'd put it on normal or slow. Just because you're further away, there's not really much of a chance of the camera losing you and it'll be a lot smoother as you move around. And then if you're a little bit closer to the camera, you probably want to put it on fast so it frames you up nicely as soon as it can. Then you have some other options here. So to enable auto tracking, what that's going to do is if you actually physically take the camera and move it and point it towards yourself or someone else, it's going to automatically lock onto them and start tracking right away. So you choose whether or not you want that on or off and then enable single tap tracking. This is actually physically on the camera itself. So all you have to do is actually physically tap the camera, which I don't know why you want to be smacking the camera, but I've now turned off the tracking. See? Now, if I tap it again, and I'm seeing the indications as it's going. The blue flashed when it happened. Now when I go, it follows me again. So the AI zoom, it actually gives you some options. So you've got just your head, which is kind of what we're looking at right now. Then you've got your half body. So if I'm further away, it would keep me zoomed in in that frame. And if it was full body, it would stay zoomed out as far as it could. But if I got really far away, it would zoom in enough, but still keep my full body in view. Anti-flicker, you can set it to auto, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Because we're on this side of the pond, we typically go 60 because everything is in 30, 60 frames. Then you got autofocus and manual focus. Now I do want to say the autofocus on this camera is probably the best of any of the smart cameras that I've tried. I haven't had much in the way of that focus breathing, you know, when it's trying to find a person. So I wouldn't bother actually changing this to manual, especially if you're somebody who's going to get up and around because then you'd have to sit there and manually fix it every single time with presets. So streamer mode, this is going to enable some stuff. And you can see we got an extra thing here and this is the max portrait mode. So this is actually where you can flip the camera and make it a portrait mode photo. So if I do this, now it's doing a vertical shoot. Now, while it's still showing up as horizontal and the video would still show up as horizontal, I can take this, rotate it in post, and I've got a TikTok ready to rock. So you can see how smooth the switch back and forth is. And it's because the actual camera is flipping and doing that. It's not a digital thing that's happening. And then smart adjustment, when the camera actually turns on or is activated for the first time, when it finds a face on camera, it's gonna actually get you framed up even if tracking's not on. Now I did switch back to 1080 mode when I turned that on and off, and that's because I wanted to test the HDR HDR. So we're going to turn that on right now. And that's what this looks like. And this is another thing. We've been talking about HDR for a long time in webcams, but it comes with a price. Yes, you've increased the dynamic range of the actual video, but look at all the noise we've introduced. We've made a much worse shot. So I always say test the HDR and see what the difference is in your particular setup, but simply don't look at a webcam as having HDR as some kind of a selling point. It just isn't. And then you've got your mirror image here, so I can click on that and then it just mirrors the image. I mean, I don't, I still, for the life of me, don't know why people would even need to use this, but it's available. So go for it, I guess. And then here you have your gimbal level adjustment, like I said, so you can actually take this and tilt it one way or the other. And you'll see the camera tilting either way as if it was a confused puppy so that you can get your horizon nice and flat. And then the last things down here, you got your firmware version and your serial number. If you need to update your camera's firmware, it'll tell you that there's an update here. You just click it, download. It's really fast. Now the software is not the only thing that'll help you with the Insta360 link. It actually does have a little accessory, this tripod.
So this extends out quite a ways if you needed to. Now, if you don't want to put it on your monitor or you just want to place it somewhere a little bit more advantageous to you, you could do that with this. It can't resist. Now it is worth noting, this is sold separately. Now the Insta360 Link runs for $299 US, but even at the full price, it's actually a little bit cheaper than Obsbot's Tiny 2. That comes in at 329 US. And yeah, that's an awful lot to ask of people to spend on a webcam. We've tested some of the more premium webcams on this channel and they often come in at a slightly lower price. But when you consider the engineering that went into making a camera like this, not to mention all of the features and all of the actual use cases that you can get out of this thing, the price points really tend to line up. But what the real question is, is are you going to use the things that this can do to actually make content? If you're gonna get up and move around the room, then yes, this is a great camera for you. If you wanna utilize any of their other modes like whiteboard or top down, or the desktop mode, those are great things that you could do. And yes, this would be the camera for you. If you're thinking, oh, cool, it rotates 180 degrees so I can shoot all of my TikToks in a native portrait mode, you can always just take any webcam and mount it sideways. So all the things before it were good selling features, that one's just a bonus feature on top. So let me know down in the comments, is the Insta360 link right for you? And while you're down there, and since you got this far, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you know when I got new videos coming out. Why don't you check out one of these videos right here? There are a couple of other AI webcams that I've done in the past. And then that way you can get a little bit more of a direct comparison if you are shopping for an AI webcam right now. And until next time, my friends, let's get to work.